This video is going to talk about G02 and G03. This is the second video explaining the very basics of G code programming. In the first video, we talked about G00 and G01. So by this point, you should have practiced um, creating a, a small program to utilize those commands. And we're going to uh, talk about G02 and G03. Now, if we use this, um, document and we go down to G02 and 3, it kind of shows you a little bit about what it does. So here's G02 and G03. There's a good explanation here. There's some good pictures down here, but essentially G02 does clockwise arcs and circles and G03 does counterclockwise arcs and circles. Now, one thing that we are going to have to talk about is R, I, and J. So when we give a command of G02 or G03, we have to give the computer some information. The first thing we have to tell the computer is, where's our endpoint? Using the X and Y, where is our endpoint? Um, after that, we have to tell it how big our arc is by telling it one of two things. We can give a radius, which is essentially the distance between the start point and the center point of the arc, or we can give it an I and or a J. The I and the J essentially tell the computer the same thing as the R, it's just a little bit different way of approaching it. While the R uh, represents a straight distance between the starting point and the center point, the I and the J represent uh, a rise and run so the I represents the movement in X that it takes to get from the start point to the center point, And the J represents the movement in uh, the Y axis that it would take to get from the start point to the center point. Now, I suppose this is a, a point of preference as far as whether you prefer the R or the I and the J. I prefer the I and the J because the R, depending on how uh, many degrees your arc is can be positive or negative and I can never remember which one so I usually just stick with the I and the J. I find that to be a little more straightforward and easier but like I said it's preference so you're free to use whichever you like as long as you get it right. Let's go ahead and go to the G code file and let's draw some uh, circles here. So let's get rid of um, all this. We're just going to go to our starting point where we are at um, x2, y2, z minus 1. So we've moved to a point, we've plunged uh, 100 thousandths into our material. Now let's uh, do a circle. I'm going to do a g02 circle. And let's say this circle is going to be one, one inch in diameter. Let's just call it one inch in diameter. And let's say for argument's sake right now, and for simplicity, that we're going to draw a complete circle. Now, if my circle goes all the way around, then that means that my start point is going to be the same as my end point. And like I talked about last time, uh, modal commands mean if something doesn't change, I don't have to restate it. So if my X and Y don't change, I don't have to restate those because uh, positional commands are modal commands. So if those stay the same, then what do I have to tell the computer? I have to tell it either an R or an I and a J. So let's do R first. Let's say that the radius on this is going to be a half inch. Let's see what happens. Okay, so with that R of 0.5, um, it shows 0, 0 as the starting point. That actually is a lot larger than I thought it was. Did I take my point? Let's see, let's put R05 and see what happens. Alright, I'm just demonstrating why, R, why I don't like R's. Now, let's do that with the I and a J. Let's say my J is 0.5. Alright, maybe NC Viewer doesn't like R's. So, what I just told the computer was that to get to the center point of this arc, you need to travel 0.5 
in your y-axis, and that's a positive 0.5. So the center point is right here, or a half inch positive in the y-axis. If I would change that j to negative, you're going to see that the circle actually flips, and it's going to be uh, lower or in the negative x-axis. Now, what if I do this with i? If I do it i negative, then that's saying from this starting point, the center point of the circle is going to be in a negative uh, half inch movement. So you can see it moves it there. Now, hopefully by now you've uh, realized that if I do this with a positive X movement represented by the I, then my center point is going to be over here and this whole circle is going to flip right over here. So there you go. Now if I did um, I and J, you're going to see two things happen. It's going to be in the positive for both, so it's going to be out in this range somewhere, and it's actually going to be larger because the I, um, because that center point is further out than a half inch. All right, so that's easy, right? Full circles are easy. What if we're doing less than full circles? Then it becomes uh, I wouldn't say more tricky, but you have to know um, you have to know your points. You got to know your x and y's or your end point. So let's say I want to do a half circle to this point right here. Well, in the x axis, that is moving one inch. So for this, the center point of that arc, it's going to be a half inch. It's going to essentially represent the radius since we're moving in a straight line. The center point does not move at all in the y-axis, right? It doesn't move at all vertically uh, from the orientation I'm looking at it. It only moves to the right. So if I say G02 and my x is moving, right? My x is moving from 2 to 3. And I also am going to have an i representing the distance from the center point from the starting point of 0.5. And that should give me an arc, a 180 degree arc that I'm looking for. So there we go. There's our arc. Now from that point, let's say we're going to do a G01 movement, which I have to tell it. And I'm going to go to X0. Oh, I'm sorry, Y0. Look at that. This actually is a good uh, example of why I like using Viewer to write the program because you get instant feedback on if it does what you want or if you got to figure out what happened. Now let's say I'm going to G03 or counterclockwise back to this point here, back to the axis with the 180 degree circle. What would that be? Well, my current X value is 3, so my next X value is going to be 4, so let's put that in. And the new center point, or the center point of this arc, is going to be um, an eye movement of 0.5. It's actually going to mirror the last one. And that is going to be positive. All right, so there's a, an example, a couple examples there. Now, if I didn't want a full circle, say I only wanted a half a circle, then I have to change my end point, but I don't necessarily have to change the center point of my circle. So let's say my end point here, or excuse me, uh, my end point for this quarter inch uh, is going to be, let's see, can I get, that looks like it's dead on this point here. So let's say x is going to be 3.5. And what's my y going to be now? Because I'm going to have a y value. So y probably minus 0.5. Let's see what happens. Oh, I get a perfect uh, quarter circle. All right. Now, R didn't work for me in this example, but um, R's do work in the machine, so you can absolutely do what works best for you. Uh, but just remember, you got to pay close attention to the I's and the R's. And while it may be a little difficult at first, you just have to think, um, you just really have to think about where 
the center point is from the starting point. And just remember, the movements follow the same rules about positive or negative. So just uh, understand that if you get the wrong data in there the first time, it's perfectly fine. Just take a step back, take a look at it, and just kind of think about what problems you made, where it is, and where you want it to be. But uh, after this, hopefully you have a decent understanding of G02 and G03, and there's no substitution for actually doing it. That should give you that knowledge that you need to continue writing programs and absolutely learning as you go.